All right, Shalom, Shalom. Call him like now. You how about Shimei Oshai, by Shimra Kadash, double gods to the elders and the apostles, a great millstone who will will peace, blessings, and citations shall go to the whole for let that scatter abroad. All right. To your brothers out there pushing the truth with our righteousness and sincerity, and to the aqua, to few sisters that are listening and learning, to you I say Shalom, and unto, and to our scattered brother Israelites that are scattered amongst the heathen, that are looking like the heathen, to you I say Shalom. All right, coming back at you with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahshua. Go in and testify the faith and lessons of Yahweh Hashem Yahshua through the spirit of Rakaka Dash. I pray this lesson be able to find the scripture's point. All right, so we are gonna jump right into this lesson, man. All right, because hey, and as you see, the title of this is from uh, GMS Upon Precepts Three. It says the red people revealed, and hey, the red people, which are the Edomites, have been revealed. Okay, they have been revealed. All right, and as a matter of fact, before. I you know, play this video. Let's go to Second Thessalonians. All right, let's go to Second Thessalonians two, and let's see. I'm gonna start at verse three, then I'm gonna jump down to verse eight. All right, Second Thessalonians two and verse three. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of prediction. Who's the man of sin? The son of prediction. The son of destruction, Esau, even the so-called white man, okay? That's who this is talking about, okay? Now, let's jump down to verse, mm, I'm going to start, I'm going to jump, I'm going to jump down to verse 7, all right? Second Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 7, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he now who let it will let until he be taken out of the way. Verse 8, and then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord Yahweh shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. This devil has been revealed, okay, in these last days, all right? So it's prophesied that Esau Edom will be revealed for who he truly is. He's the wicked, and he's the Edomites, man, okay? So without further ado, let's go back to this video here, and let's play this video, and let's do some more damage, all right? But as many are finding out, Edomites, the descendants of Esau, actually made up the Roman Empire. As a matter of fact, the Jewish Encyclopedia also states that the name Edom is used by the Talmudists for the Roman Empire, and they applied to Rome every passage of the Bible referring to Edom or to Esau. Where is Edom today? Esau's land was called Edom. Edom is the country of Jordan and the place of Petra, the city in the mountain. Look at the architecture of the photo at Petra which is Edom. Notice how it resembles Rome along with many of the structures all over the world. So what that tells you, the Edomites are not done away with. But a lot of these Christians like to say that the Edomites are done away with. I right? just like these Edomites, they built in Mount uh, uh, Petra, okay? All right, Mount Seir and Petra, all right? They continue to build the same way. Look at that, man. All right, let's go back. All right, let's see something right quick. Okay. Let's show this again. Petra, the city in the mountain. Look at the architecture of the photo at Petra. Look at that. All right, they build the same way. That's ancient Rome. All right, and hey, America, Babylon the Great, is our modern-day Rome, the revised Roman Empire. Which is Edom. Notice how it resembles Rome along with many of the structures all over the world. The Bank of England. Look at that. Come on, man. <laughs> but these Christians and these damn Jays like to say that the Edomites are done away with. This is proof that the Edomites are not done away with. They're still around. Okay? Hotel of Rome. The Spring U.S. Court. The Vatican. And these either might still build that way, man. And as a matter of fact, let's go to a scripture. I'm going to come back to that video. All right. Let's go to Psalms 49 and verse 11. Okay. Psalms 49 and verse 11. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations 
they call their lands after their own names, okay? The same way they built it during the ancient Rome, they build that way continually today, all right? And you saw the buildings, man. So that's just for the proof that these, hey, that the Edomites are not done away with, man, all right? And as a matter of fact, let's get another scripture. Another scripture came to mind, all right? This is uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 16. There is no end of all the people. Did you hear that? All right. Mr. Vocab Malone. All right. And hey, like them brothers over there, like them brothers asked him, man, all right, who's ruling now? All right. But he couldn't answer that question, man. He couldn't answer that question. All right. This guy here, he's through, man. Vocab Malone, he's through. All right. Point blank, period. He's through. All right. <laughs> but hey. Instead of him just going back into the world and just rejoicing and, you know, living it up while he still can, what he's doing, man, he's coming up against the Hebrew Israelites. He's trying to come up against the teachings of what we're doing, man. Starting with the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone and the brothers on down. And of course, the brothers that teach the light-minded doctrine of Great Millstone, man. The light-minded brothers that teach the light-wise doctrine of Great Millstone. All right? This guy is too busy, all right, trying to come up against this truth. All right. After we have proven to him time and time and time again, all right, that hey, he's the Edomite, and hey, and what's gonna happen to him? They're going into captivity. Okay, thus says the scriptures. All right, but hey, these Christians like to push that there's salvation for everyone. There's no salvation for everyone. Salvation is only for Israel and Israel only, man. Point blank. Period. Okay. Let's read this. Okay. Ecclesiastes 4 and 16, there is no end of all the people, even of all that have been before them. They also that come after shall not rejoice in him. Surely this also is vanity and vexation of the of spirit. Okay, so there is no end of all the people, man. Okay, there is no end of the people. All right. All right, let's go back to the video. Our sports stadiums resemble the Colosseum. Even modern day sports are in fact derived from Rome. European systems of government are set up like the early Roman Empire, having both Senate and the Republic, hmm. local government and other things as well. Esau's descendants are called Edom. Just like today, all right, you got the senators, the mayors, the governors, all right, etc. Just like in ancient Rome, you had a two ancient Rome, all right, this modern day Rome has, uh, just like the ancient Rome had a two party system. All right, um, uh, I think it was the, uh, I forgot the names of them though. All right, this modern day Rome, Babylon the Great America, has a two party system the Republicans and the Democrats. Okay, all right, everything that happened in ancient Rome proves that hey, the Edomites are still here, man. Okay, let's play this video. Nice. Later, they're called Idumeans. Idumea or e Idumeans, okay? Not Edomenians, it's Idumeans. Edom in Hebrew was the region south of Judea, originally inhabited by the reputed descendants of Jacob's brother Esau. Edom was periodically subjected to Judea under David and Solomon the Maccabees, homeland of the House of Herod. There were no natural boundaries between Idumea and Judea, so the borders were always in flux. According to the Jewish Encyclopedia, 1925 edition, in 163 BC, Judas Maccabeus conquered the Edomite territory for a time. They, the Edomites, were again subdued by John Hyrcanus, about 125 BC, by whom they were forced to observe Israelite rites and laws of the Torah. They were then incorporated with the tribe of Judah, and their country was called by the Greeks and Romans, Idumea. With Antipater the Idumean began the Idumean dynasty that ruled over Judea till its conquest by the Romans. From this time, the Idumeans ceased to be a separate people. Therefore, Edom later became known as the Roman Empire. With the sacking of Rome by the barbarians came the mingling or spoiling of Esau's seed, thus fulfilling the prophecy of Jeremiah 49.10. But I have made e Actually, that prophecy is being fulfilled right now as we speak. All right, let's go to that scripture. All right, because that prophecy is being fulfilled now. All right, that one's was fulfilled during the ancient Roman Empire. That prophecy is being fulfilled right now. All right, 
And actually, I'm going to start at Jeremiah chapter 49 and verse 7. And it reads, Concerning Edom, thus said the Lord, Yahweh, Yah, Shai, Hose, Is wisdom no more in teeming? Is there is counsel perished from the prudent? Is their wisdom vanished? Okay. And this is happening now. All right. Their wisdom is vanishing, man. All right. No more wisdom in teeming. All right. The wise counsel of Edom is being destroyed through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Yah, Shai. All the lies that these devils have told are being revealed during these last days. Okay, now let's jump down to verse 10. But I have made Esau bare. I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled, and his brethren, and his neighbors, and he is not. Okay, so this is a prophecy that is happening right now as we speak. All right, let's go to Obadiah verse... Okay, how are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? Okay, his hidden things are being sought up by the prophets. All right, he's being revealed, like we read in 2 Thessalonians 2 and 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed. All right, let's go, uh, let's skip down to verse 8. Obadiah verse 8. Shall I not in that day, saith the Lord Yahweh, even destroy the wise men out of Edom? And understanding out of the Mount of Esau, and that's happening, okay? Because these devils are being revealed, okay? And during the last days, we're in the last days of Esau's rulership, man, okay? We're in the last days of Edom, all right? Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed, okay? Verse 9, and thy mighty men, O Teman, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the of the mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughtering. Hey, that's about to happen. Okay. Esau Edom is about to go through a great slaughter through the mice beam nuclear missiles. All right. And the laser beam fired from the chairs wherever Esau dwells, man. Okay. All right. Um there's another scripture I wanted to get. I forgot what it is. Um oh, con, con, con. Con, I know where it is now. All right, good. Yeah, let's get this. All right. This is Isaiah chapter 25 and verse 7. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. That veil is being lifted now. All right. The veil of lies. All right. That these damn devils have spread throughout the four corners of the earth, trying to hide their true identity through being so-called white, which they're not white. Okay. They are the biblical Edomites, man, all right? And it's all being revealed, all right, in these last days, okay? So now let's go back to the video, all right, since we cleared that up. Esau bear, I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled, and his brethren and his neighbors, and he is not. The Goths were Ukraine, Romania, Moldova, Belarus, Poland, and Scandinavia. The Saxons were Germany, the Dutch, the English, Northern Albania, Great Britain, Scotland, Ireland, and Wales. The Franks were France. The Lombards were Italy. The Vandals were East Germany, which were known for their senseless destruction, which is where we get the term vandalism. Vandalism is the behavior attributed originally to the Vandals by the Romans in respect of culture, ruthless destruction or spoiling of anything beautiful or venerable. These kingdoms all branched off into other kingdoms such as Canada, America, Caucasus, Siberia, Central Asia, Sweden, Finland, Norway, Ireland, and maybe others. No, together these kingdoms all make up the rule of the entire world. Esau and his kingdoms, Edom, will be ruling at the end of the world, and Jacob will rule afterward in the millennium under the Messiah, Yeshua. Let's play that again. Let's play that one more time. All right. Higher world. Esau and his kingdoms, Edom, will be ruling at the end of the world, and Jacob will rule afterward in the millennium under the Messiah, Yeshua. And that's Yahusha, not Yeshua. All right. Now let's go to the scriptures. All right. Uh, let's see. Where I want to go to? Nope. Actually, nope. Not that one. But that's a good one, though. Um, get that in a minute. Let's go here. All right. 
This is 2 Ezra chapter 6 and verse 7. Then answer I and said, What shall be the be the parting asunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followed? Alright, what's going to be the end of Esau's rulership and the next kingdom to come, which is e which is uh the rulership of Jacob, okay? Alright. And as a matter of fact, let's prove that with Matthew chapter 24. And verse 3, when the disciples came to him in the Mount of Olives, all right? All right, this is Matthew chapter 24, and verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? Or what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? Whose world? Esau's rulership, man. The end of Esau's kingdom. All right, the end of the age, the aeon, okay? Now let's go back to second Israel. Chapter 6 and verse 7. Yep. Right down here. All right. Second is just chapter 6 and verse 7. Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting of thunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followed? Who's in rulership right now? Esau, even the so called white man. All right. Verse 8. And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. Okay? All right? Just like we just saw in that video, man. Okay? Just like you saw in that video. All right? Let's go back to the video. Let's listen to that video again. Let's listen to that part again. Sweden, Finland, Norway, Ireland, and maybe others. No. Together, these kingdoms all make up the rule of the entire world. Esau and his kingdoms, Edom, will be ruling at the end of the world, and Jacob will rule afterward in the millennium under the Messiah, Yeshua. Point blank period, man. All right. And we just read it. All right. Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. Let's get more proof that Edom is ruling. All right. Let's go to Psalms 137 and verse 7. Remember, O Lord, Yahweh, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Race it, race it, even to the foundation thereof. O daughter of Babylon, who rules in the daughter of Babylon? Esau, even the so-called white man, who art to be destroyed. Happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. Verse 9. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. Okay? All right. So why is Edom is being compared to Babylon, the great America, the daughter of Babylon? Why? Because he's ruling in the daughter of Babylon, all right? And other parts of the world where Esau is dwelling, man. Okay, the Edomites dwell. Many Bible scholars teach that the Edomites no longer exist, but scripture clearly shows them in the last days. Was not Esau? And we read in uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 7. It's like chapter 4 and verse 16. Let's go back to it. All right. Let's go back to it. All right. <laughs> For all these Christians out there. Ecclesiastes 4 and 16 again. There is no end of all the people. The Edomites are known. They're not done away with. They're still around. And it's been proven. And we proved that. That who's, all right, that Esau will be the end of this world, the end of this age, the Aeon, and Jacob will be the next to rule, okay? Ecclesiastes 4 and verse 16, there is no end of all the people, even of all that has been before them. They also that come after shall not rejoice in him. Surely this is also his vanity and vexation of spirit, okay? Point blank period, man. There is no end of all the people. And we just proved that. But the Christian church, they like to teach that the Edomites are no longer around. They don't exist anymore. No. And that's really just to cover their asses, man. All right? <laughs> but, hey, the truth is coming out. And as a matter of fact, before I go back to the video, let's get this. Okay? Let's go here. Because this is what's happening now, man. All the lies are being, okay, rebuked. All the lies are just... Being destroyed. And let's read this. This is 2nd Israel chapter 6 and verse 27. For evil shall be put out and deceit shall be quenched. All the lies are being quenched. 
through the spirit and power of Yah by Shem Verse 28. As for faith, it shall flourish, corruption shall be overcome, and the truth which have been so long without fruit shall be declared. The truth is being declared throughout the four corners of the earth, man. Okay? Truth is springing out the earth now. And as a matter of fact, let's get that. Let's go to Psalms 85 and verse 11. Okay? Psalms 85 and verse 11. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Okay? All right? Truth is now being brought back into this earth. All right? All the lies and all the uh the deceits are being quenched, man. All right? That this devil Esau even has told to hide his true identity and to try and to try to hide who the true Israelites are, all right? Which are the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, all right? And not those people over there, the 1948ers that are in the land, okay? Hey, the truth is being revealed, man, okay, in these last days, all right? Now let's go back to the video. Saw Jacob's brother, saith the Lord, Yet I loved Jacob, and hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom saith, We are impoverished, but we will return, and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, They shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness, and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. Many people use this scripture to claim that Edom was exterminated, but this is not what the passage implies. It states very clearly that the Most High hated Esau and laid his mountains and heritage to waste. But Point blank period, man. Romans uh, 9.13 says, As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Alright? The Lord hate these devils, man. Okay? Point blank period. But in the next verse, it states, Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. All right, and they did that, all right, during the Renaissance period when they came back into power, okay? At the time of Malachi's prophecy, Edom was a wasteland between 445 and 432 BC. How do we know this? The Most High said, I laid, past tense, his mountains and his heritage to waste. Edom's <laughs> response was, We will return and build the desolate places. So if Edom was completely destroyed, how could they say that they'd return? And why would scripture give reference to Edom still being around in the last days? The Most High's response was, they shall build, but I will throw down. This is a future prophecy that Edom will return and rebuild, but the Most High will destroy his kingdom in his final judgment against Edom in the last days. For Esau, Edom is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. 2nd Estras chapter 6 verse 9, the Apocrypha. The prophecy in Isaiah chapter 63 verses 1 through 6 confirms that this is indeed what will happen. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Bozrah? And we can read that ourselves, all right? All right, and I'll put this video in the description box. All right, you can read the rest ourselves, all right? So, hey, there you go, man, okay? <laughs> hey revealed man let's get this this is isaiah chapter 34 and verse 5 for my sword shall be bathed in heaven the sword is talking about the mycebium nuclear missiles okay all right behold it shall come down upon idumia idumia is the greek way of saying edom and upon the people of my curse to judgment verse 6 the sword of the Lord Yahabashim Yashai is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of the lambs and goats and with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord Yahabashim Yashai have a sacrifice in Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumia, the land of Edom. Okay, so hey, this is what it's talking about, man. All right, in Basra, you can compare this to America because Bas Snaki, Basra was the capital of Edom. All right. Verse 7, and the unicorns shall come down with them, and the bullocks with the bulls, and their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust made fat with fatness. Why, Lord? Verse 8, for it is the day of the Lord Yahweh vengeance, the year of recompense for the controversy of Zion. All right, for what the Israelites 
Sengagi, for what the Edomites did to the Israelites, man, to the nation of Israel, to the Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, okay? All right, there you go. This is why this is happening. And as a matter of fact, let's go to, now let's go to Isaiah 63 and verse 1. Who is this that coming from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? This is Yahweh Shai coming, okay? That this that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength, I that speak in righteousness, might need to say. Verse 2. Wherefore art thou red in thy apparel and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? I have trodden the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in my anger and, and trample them in my fear. Who is going to trample? The Edomites. All right, he's coming back to a world that is ruled by the nation of Edom, okay? And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will slay all, slay, and I will stain all my raiments, okay? So this is going to happen to Esau Edom, all right? And that's just symbolic that the Lord in Habashim Yashar is coming back to do a lot of killing. Verse 4, for the day of vengeance is in my heart, the year of my redeem is come. Verse 5, and I looked, and there was none to help. And I wonder that there was none to uphold. Therefore, my own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury it upheld me. Verse 6, And I will tread down the people in my anger and make them drunk in my fury, and I will bring down their strength to the earth. All right? And that's the Lord Yahweh Shai coming back. All right? Say, so, hey. To bring down the strength of Esau Edom to the earth, man. They're going to be cast down. Okay? Point blank period. Alright? And we're in the last days of Esau Edom's rulership, man. Okay? Let's go here. This is Psalms 104 and verse 35. Let the sinners be consumed out of the earth. And let the wicked be no more. Bless thou the glory of Hashem O oh, my soul, praise ye the Lord how about Shin And that's what we're saying. Let the wicked be no more. Okay? Let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. Alright? And the wickedness of the wicked is about to come to an end. Alright? So hey, we're at the end of this devil's rulership. Alright? Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Okay? Alright. Let's go to now. Let's go here. Let's go to 2 Israel chapter 11 and verse 37. And I beheld, and lo, as it were a roaring lion chased out of the wood. And I saw that he sent out a man's voice unto the eagle, and said, Hear thou, I will talk with thee, and the highest shall say unto thee. And that's what the Lord is doing, man. He's speaking to his prophets, man. Okay, verse 39. Art not thou it? That remainest of the fourth beast, who I made to reign in my world, that the end of their times might come through them. And hey, we're at the end. Who is going to come through? All right. The end is going to come through Esau Edom. Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. Verse 4. So like verse 40. And the fourth came and overcame all the beasts that were past. All right. All the four major empires. All right. The Babylonian Empire. The Medo-Persian Empire, all right. The uh, I think it's the Greece Empire, and the ain't all right, and the uh, ancient Roman Empire, all right. We're in the revised Roman Empire, okay. The revised Roman Empire that had that deadly wound but did heal, okay. America, Babylon the Great, all right. Esau came back in the rulership, okay, and had power over the whole. And had power over the earth with great fearfulness and over the whole com compass of the earth with much wicked oppression. They're oppressing everyone, not just the Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and the Americans. Now they're oppressing their own people. What these devils trying to do now? Bring forth the NWO. All right. They're trying to ink, they're trying to CHIP everyone. Okay? All right. But the Lord Yahabashi Shai is gonna put an end to it. Okay? And so long time dwelt he upon the earth with deceit, lies, all right? Let's go to now. 
All right. Daniel's 2 and verse 40. And the four kingdoms shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. All right, that's talking about the ancient Roman Empire. Verse 40. And whereas thou sawest the feet and feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. All right. Because we're in the ancient Roman Empire, not snug it. I'm not the ancient Roman Empire, but the revised Roman Empire. All right, that we end up with those ten toes. All right, to win the ten toes of that statue, which is part iron and part clay, which means it's part strong and part weak. Okay, all right, let's continue to read on. Verse 41 And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron. The kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. Verse 42. And as the toes of the feet were a part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. Partly strong because of the military. All right, the military might. So it's partly strong and partly broken broken because the hey these edomite nations they're in the disagreements they're in the disagreements with one another okay and as a matter of fact let's prove that let's go to mark chapter 3 and verse 23 and he called to them unto him and said unto them in parables how can satan cast out satan and if a kingdom be divided against itself that kingdom cannot stand verse 25 and if a house be divided against itself that house cannot stand. The house of Esau, the races of Esau, the Edomites, they're, hey, they're divided. All right. Verse 26. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand but have an end. All right. And he has an end. All right. And we're at the end of this devil's rulership. Okay. All right. Let's get this. It's Daniel's chapter 7 and verse 7. And after this, I saw... In the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and breaketh in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was div and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten toes. It's not like ten horns. Lucky, I'm sorry about that. All right. And we just read about that. All right. Partly strong and partly broken. Okay. Verse 8. And I considered the horn. And behold, there came up among them another little horn. That little horn represents America. All right. Because America was born through the birth canal of Great Britain. Okay. All right. During 1776, when America declared its independence from Great Britain. All right. You all know about that. Revolutionary War. Y'all should know about that. All right. Before whom were, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. All right. The first, uh, first major kingdoms that was plucked up, which means, hey, they rulership came to an end. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of man, and a mouth that speaketh great things. All right. So hey. What this kingdom do is speak of blasphemies, all right? All right, uh, that's a matter of fact. Let's skip down to verse, mm, verse, where is that scripture at? Where is it? Yeah, right here. Let's read verse 19. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his T represents power by the way and his nails of brass which devour breaketh in pieces and stamp the residue with his feet and of the ten horns that were in the head all right and of the others which came up and before whom three fell even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that speaketh very great things who looks was more stout than his fellows, okay? Yeah, 
because America looked down on these other nations, man. All right, that's what they do. They look down upon these other nations. All right. <laughs> like, 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 you know, as a matter of fact, let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter fifty and verse. It's verse twenty-four, I believe. No, right here. I'm gonna start at verse twenty-three. How is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? How has Babylon become a desolate desolation among the nations? All right, Babylon, the great America, is that hammer of the whole earth that ruleth in the kingdoms of men. All right, along with NATO and the EU. Okay, verse twenty-four. I have laid a snare for thee. And thou art also taken, O Babylon, and thou hast not snug, and thou was not aware, thou art found, and also caught, because thou hast striven against the Lord Yahweh Shem Verse 25, the Lord Yahweh Shem hath opened his armory, and hath brought forth the weapons of his indignation. Those those ICBM nuclear missiles, and that's about to take place. For well, this is the work of the Lord Yahweh Shem power of hosts, and the land of the Chaldees. Verse 26, Come against her from the utmost border, open her storehouses, cast heat, cast her up as heaps, and destroy her utterly. Let nothing of her be left. And that's what's about to happen, man. Because these NATO, EU and NATO nations are about to come up against Babylon, the Great America, man. All right. Let's prove that. This is us, Revelations chapter 17 and verse 16. All right. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, the EU and NATO nations, all right? And they're hating, hey, and they're now turning their backs on Babylon the Great America. The Brits are now forming their own, all right? These nations are now joining with the Brits, okay, to now form their own currency. They're ditching the petrodollar, all right? So, hey, this U.S. petrodollar is about to fall, okay, all right? Revelation 17, verse 16 again. And the teen horn which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. ICBM nuclear missiles, okay? Verse 17. For Yahweh hath put in their hearts, which means their minds, to fulfill his will, and to agree, and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of Yahweh shall be fulfilled. Verse 18. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which ringeth over the kings of the earth. All right. And that's Babylon, great America. And who rules in the daughter of Babylon? Esau, even the so-called white man. All right. And Yahweh is coming back to a world that is ruled by Edom. Okay. But hey, all is being revealed in these last days. Okay. Habakkuk 2 and 16. Thou art filled with shame for glory. Drink thou also, and let thy foreskin be uncovered. The cup of the Lord Yahweh Shemashah's right hand shall be turned unto thee, and shameful spirit shall be upon thy glory. And that's what you see. Shameful spirit is now in this devil's glory, man. Okay? So, hey, their glory is being turned into shame. They're being revealed, all right, in these last days, all right? And we're in the last days of Esau's rulership, man. Okay? Let's read this. This is Judith chapter 16 and verse 17. Woe to the nations that rise up against my kindred. All right. The Lord's people, the Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and the Americans. And who's the number one, all right, nation that did this to the Lord's people? Esau Edom, the so-called white man, the Edomites. The Lord Yahweh Shemashah Almighty will take vengeance of them in the day of judgment and putting fire and worms in their flesh and they shall fill, fill them and weep forever. All right? These devils are going into captivity for what they did to the nation of Israel. Point blank period, man. All right? So, hey, the Edomites are still here. All right? We've proven that. All right? They're still here. All right? And the Lord Yahweh and Yahweh is about to do away with Edom. Okay? Right, let's get one more. Then I'm going to close it out, man. All right? This is... uh. Actually, let me start up, and then I'm going to skip down. Mm. Um, let's just get straight to the point, man. 
All right. Ezekiel 35 and verse 5. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. Verse 6. Therefore, as I live, said the Lord, Yahweh shall have power, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Since thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Verse 7. Thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate and cut off from it him that passeth out and him that returneth. All right. Verse 8. And I will fill his mountains. All right. The mountains represents the governments of Esau. All right. These Edomites, man. All right. The kingdoms, wherever these Edomites dwell. All right. Wherever they got their kingdoms set up. Okay. With his slain men and thy hills and in thy valleys and in all thy rivers. Shall they fall that are slain with the sword? And that ultimate sword is some ICBM nuclear missiles, all right? Verse 9. I will make the petrol sorry, and I will, I will make the perpetual desolation, and thy cities shall not return. That's what it means in uh Malachi 1 and 4. They shall build, but I will throw down. The Lord is gonna throw down these devils' kingdom. Okay, he's going, he's coming back to destroy the rulership. And the kingdoms of Esau, even the so called white man. And ye shall know that I am the Lord Yahweh Shem Yahushai. Let's skip down to verse 14 and 15. We're going to close it out right here. All right. Enough said and done. All right. Thus said the Lord Yahweh Shem Yahushai power. When the whole earth rejoiceth, I will make thee desolate. Verse 15. As thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of the house of Israel because it was desolate. They rejoiced at our fall, man. All right. They had us in captivity. And what's going to happen? So will I do unto thee. Thou shalt be desolate, O Mount Seir, and all Idumia. The Edomites. Your rulership is coming to an end, man. And you're going into a thousand years of the most brutal captivity known to man. And after your thousand years are up, we're going to get it. Obadiah verse 18, I got to go to it, man. Even all of it, and they shall know that I am the Lord Yahweh Shem Yahushai. And the Lord Yahweh Shem Yahushai is also going to use his elect man to do this. Let's get that. Let's go on another one of the good scriptures, man. One of my favorites. Ezekiel 25 verse 12. Thus said the Lord Yahweh Shem Yahushai power, because that Edom have dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance and have greatly offended and revenges himself upon them who all 12 tribes of israel man the israelites the so-called negroes latinos and the americans and the speckled bird israelites that are scattered amongst the heathen that look like the heathen verse 13 therefore thus said the lord yahweh shall have power i will also stretch out my hand upon edom and will cut off man from it so i'll cut off man and beast from it and i will make it desolate from teeming and they of the dead shall fall by the sword Verse 14, and I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people, Israel. All right, when the Lord Yahushua returns, when the men of the Lord get those new bodies, hey, the Lord Yahushua Yah is going to use his men, the 144,000 mighty men, the elect, rulers, the rulers, the next rulers, the kings and judges of the earth, to, hey, exact vengeance upon the Edomites, man. Thus says the scriptures, not my words. And they shall do in Edom according to my anger and according to my fury. And they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord Yahweh Shem Yahushai. One more. All right. Let's go here. We're going to wrap it up. We're going to end it at verse 18. Obadiah verse 15. For the day of the Lord Yahweh Shem Yahushai is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thy own head. Verse 16. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. All right. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, because you're about to drink that cup of slavery, the cup of racism. You already are. I saw our, uh, our article in the uh, community section where these Edomites are now being hated. All right. They're being discriminated against. That goes to show you that Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 7 is taking place, man. All right. And Lord, you have thy power will put all these curses upon thy enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. So you devils are drinking that cup now, man. All right. We had to drink from that cup. So you devils are going to drink from that cup. 
All right, prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers. You devils got to pay for the sins of your forefathers. Point blank, period, man. All right, so don't try to hide behind your so called whiteness because you're not white, by the way. All right, I'm white. I'm white. What did I do? It wasn't me, that was my forefathers. No, that was you, devils. All right, you are your forefathers. All right, what crimes? What crimes did I do? You know what crimes you did, devils. All right? And your crimes are coming out. Verse 16 again. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink and they shall swallow down and they shall be as though they have not been. Verse 17. But upon Mount Zion, the Israelites shall be deliverance. Salvation is only for Israel, man. Point blank, period. And there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Verse 18. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them, and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord, Yahweh Shemiah has spoken it. This is going to happen after your thousand years of captivity. All right? So I'm going to end it here, man. Lord, we're in our praise and lesson was edifying. All praises and glorifications go to Yahweh Hashem Yahshai, by Hashem Rakakadash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace, blessings, societations go to the whole for let that scatter abroad. See you with another lesson soon. Lord, one, Kwame Yahshirah, Shawn, one, Wah, Baba, Ball, about one, DTA, about a ball. Boom! Show one till next time. And Esau, we're at the end of your rulership, man. All right, so do what you got to do. Whatever you're going to do, do it, man, because your time is running out, man. All right, Sean Wong till next time. Sean Wong.